Can you see that? Yeah. So on the divine love path, what happens? We can progress above the sixth sphere, but on the natural love path, we cannot. There are literally billions of spirits on the natural love path who have perfected their natural love, the love that they express from within themselves. They have perfected that love to the point of the sixth sphere. They've been there for thousands of years and they're having a wide variety of experiences. And the dimensional space of the sixth sphere is expanding laterally because of those experiences. They are creating planets, they're creating solar systems, they're doing all sorts of very powerful things that you can't even imagine perhaps right now, but they are having a lateral experience of the universe. They believe themselves to be growing, but they are stagnant in their own progression at the soul level. On the divine love path, you progress beyond the sixth sphere, and you enter a sphere of transition, which is called the seventh sphere. The seventh sphere is the sphere of transition between the, the, the human soul and the divine soul. And when you make the transition between the two souls, you enter this experience which is called the new birth. You, if you were a Christian, would have heard it as being born again. In the first century I said you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the seventh above the eighth sphere. I call this area the kingdom of man and I call this area above the eighth sphere the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of God because the only people that can be there are the people who have received divine love to the point where their soul has actually been physically transformed into a new creature and they experience this new birth. And when you experience the new birth, a whole lot of new capabilities come to you that you don't have before in your own soul. Your soul grows and expands into a new condition, into a new being. A question up the back there? If you can keep your hand up, Patrice. AJ, I was just wondering what the benefits of spiritual hospitals are in regards to over in South America. I don't know if you've heard of them. And where their spirits are or what's happening in that regard. Can we stay on topic for the moment, though? Sorry. Is it, no, it's not really related. I can answer the question, but, uh, but I feel I'd like to try and stay on this topic if we can. Do we all at some stage down the track end up in new birth? No. The new birth has to come from a decision inside of yourself to choose to receive God's love into your soul. It's not an intellectual choice either. It has to be an emotional choice, a longing for God's love from within. When I refer to prayer, that's what I'm talking about. Prayer is just a longing for God's love to enter your soul. There's only three things you'll need on this path. Three things only. You don't need me. You don't need anybody else on this path. You need three things only. First thing, a longing for God's love to enter you. That's the first thing. Uh, and I mean a longing, not just, oh, I think I'd like to have God's love enter me, and oh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You know, I mean a longing, a like real deep, fervent desire within yourself. You need that. You will also need a longing for God's truth to enter you. So that's the second thing you'll need, a longing for God's truth. In other words, I have to give up all of my errors emotionally. So if I have a belief about love that love sacrifices itself, I need to give up that emotion. If I have a belief about love that love doesn't engage in sex, I have to give up that emotion. If I have a belief about love that love always means doing what the other person wants. I need to give up that emotion. If I have a belief about love, that love means that I will always get what I want, I have to give up that emotion. There are so many, I could list a hundred emotions, a thousand maybe, or even more emotions that many of us may have that we have to give up on that path. So I have to have a longing for God's truth to enter me emotionally, not, not intellectually, emotionally. When God's truth enters me emotionally, I will automatically do what is loving. I won't have to try. 
I won't have to try and think, oh, what's loving? What's loving in this situation? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, I'm confused. We won't feel like that at all in this state, right? In this state, what we do is we, we know, we don't even have to think, we know what loving would do. And we automatically feel drawn into doing it. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. Then, the third thing that we need is a quality that is the most neglected quality here on the planet. And it's the quality of humility. I want to define humility. Humility is the passionate desire to experience fully all of your own emotion without blame, judgment or condemnation of others. That's the three things we'll need. A longing for God's tr- love, a longing for God's truth and humility. When you have those things, you will guaranteed progress on the divine love path. Now, I say three things, not very much to remember, hey. You try putting it into practice in your day-to-day life. And you'll find, actually, wow, at the very first moment I just you know, said some untruth. Well, I'm straight away out of heart. You try it in the break. In the break, you know, when somebody snaffles that cake that you wanted. <laughs> right? If you were in truth, you would say, I wanted that cake. <laughs> Wouldn't you, if you felt that? And then you'd go to yourself, all right, what's my emotion? Oh, it's an emotion of missing out. I feel like I'm missing out on that cake. And then you'll, right at that moment, if you're in truth, you'll feel that emotion in a childlike way. Because that's another thing about these two paths. See, on this path, on this path, you're adult-like on the natural love path. On the divine love path, you are childlike. So you go, oh, <laughs> I missed out on that cake, isn't it terrible? You know, and away you go, right? If that's how you felt in that moment, you would do that. If you are in that state. And what's going to happen on this planet is that some people, and then eventually quite a few people, are going to get in this state, and you'll see it in action in your day-to-day life. And you'll be amazed about how you can live your life that way in the world that we're currently living in, which is very, very different. The truth is that when you get into that state, you are the most powerful creator that you could ever be because everything is driven by desire and emotion. Everything, absolutely everything. And once you recognize the power of that state, you'll love it. You won't want to give it up for anything or anyone. Right? So if I came along and said, ah, oh, no, nah, no, nah, you know all that stuff I said about the divine love stuff, you know, ah, oh, no, no, you follow me instead and we'll go off on this tangent over here. You say, what? 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 Why would I want to do that for? Because you're already experiencing the state of complete connection with God. It's not a religion. It's not like something that you've got to follow with rules, although you will in your heart, feel what's right and what's wrong instantly. Right? Nothing. And in fact, there are some Bible verses that refer to it, like in the, in the Old Testament. They helped me learn about it. And one of them said, the heart of stone becomes a heart of flesh. In other words, your heart, your feelings, your motivations, your emotions get transformed into this new state of being. You are sensitive emotionally, and everything becomes an emotional experience, everything. And you will not be able to do anything that breaks your own integrity to yourself. Now you think about that. How many of us are doing a job at the moment that we don't want to do? Right? Because we want to earn money. Well, when you get into this state of at-one-ment with God, this is this state in the eighth sphere, which is called at-one-ment with God. Right? When you get into that state, you will not be able to ever do that. And in fact, to be frank with you, by the time you probably get to the third sphere or the fourth sphere of the progression, you will not be able to do it. Because you can't stay in something that's untruthful for you anymore. You just can't. It hurts so much that you just can't do it, so you don't. And then you go down the track of, oh, my fears, you know, now I've got my money coming in. What do I do now? And, and well, that's an emotion, right? 
And so you do with that emotion. How do you do with that emotion? Oh, nobody's going to care for me anymore. No, 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 way I go, right? I feel that emotion and I release that completely. And you know, when I come out of that, I'm going to think, what am I thinking about? Like, I've got a connection with God here. God's the creator of the universe. What am I thinking about? How can I believe that I'm not going to be cared for? But you'll only feel that when the emotions of a lack of abundance and all these other emotions are going to be released from you. That's when you'll feel it. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So on this path, what happens is you become real, real. Everything is emotionally real. You don't intellectualize yourself and you do not reframe everything. You know, oh, that man punched me in the nose today. Oh, yeah, I know he's got some problems. What? Like, you've got some problems. What do you think your law of attraction is to attract somebody punching you in the nose? You need to have a look at that, you know, what's going on. Now, was it because you were in truth or was it because you were in error? If it was in truth, then fine. But if it was in error, what did you do in error to attract that? What was the emotion? Ah, it was the emotion of fear in me. It was an emotion that I believed my body might die. It was an emo whatever the emotion is, I release. When I release that, those kind of events happen far less often. And what happens is as I progress more and more and more on the path, I start creating in very, very powerful ways, far more powerful than the intellectual try, 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 try. How many of us are sick of trying? I'm sick of trying. I don't know about you. I spent a lot of my life, this life, doing the trying. right? And the whole reason why I came back to experience this life because it's very different than the first century life I had because the whole life, my whole life in the first century, I didn't have to try. Right? And then I, wanted, I got up the spirit world and, I'm, and everyone else is coming to me, oh, do you know that feeling about trying to do... No, I'm sorry, I don't. You'll have to talk to Mary about that one. I've got no idea about that one. <laughs> you know, and, and I felt totally clueless because the majority of people were coming to me for help and I didn't even know the answers to the majority of their, cause I, their problems because I hadn't personally experienced them. And so I decided with Mary, because the soul union state is the only way you can come back to earth, that we return. And we decided to return. One of the reasons was so that I could at least get some more like knowledge of what it feels like to try and try and try and try. And it feels terrible. I don't know about you, but I hate it. It's like, I don't ever want to do it again. That's how I feel. And so when you're on this path, that's what you'll get to, the place where you won't have to ever do that again. Every th single thing you desire is harmonious with love, and so therefore it's automatically created in this state. In this state, you've got to think your way into it. Yeah, yep, no worries. What am I going to create? And away you go. And while it sounds all lovely, it's not very useful to you. 